watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shall we pray, please? In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Mighty Father, I want to thank you for this moment. Thank you for the privilege to bring your word to your people. Lord, speak through me. Give me understanding. Help me to flow by your grace. And let this message, Jehovah Elohim, be credited to you and you alone. Give your people understanding. Expose the lie of the devil and destroy every demonic strategy to bring down your people, even your own creatures. Thank you, Father, because I know you are giving understanding to the simple through this message today. That your name and your name alone might be glorified. Put the devil to shame. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm preaching today on the message titled, Overcoming Satanic Powers. Overcoming Satanic Powers. In the book of Job chapter 2 and in verse number 6. You know, today a lot of people do not even believe in the existence of the devil. In the book of Job chapter 2 and in verse number 6. Let us look at what the scripture has to say. Because what you do not believe in. You cannot even begin to fathom or understand or even fight or put up a resistance against. And the enemy you underrate is a dangerous enemy. And, and the enemy that you don't believe exists, ha, honey, that one is more formidable than any foe that you can ever think of. Because you cannot fight what you don't even believe exists. Hallelujah. Because you can be careless in the face of an enemy that you do not believe exists at all. In the book of Job, chapter 2, verse 6, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy power, but save his life. So when Satan fought from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with saw boys from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrap himself with her, and he sat down among the ashes. In verse 9, Then said his wife unto him, Thou, dost thou still retain thy integrity, cause God, and die? But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speakest. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. In verse 11, And when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliphaz, the Tamanite, and... And in verse 12, and when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they could not recognize Job because of what has happened to him. They lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. Honey, here is the story of a man by the name of Job. His problems, his challenges began, you know, when a particular day the bible said the children of god came to present themselves before god and the devil went among them the reason why i'm reading these passages today is because first and foremost i need to establish to you that satan is a personality that exists now this is an account of a situation that happened an occurrence an event in which the devil himself was present and the Bible said in that meeting, the devil came in and guess what was the, the, the main focus of the conversation he had with God? It was about the man of Job. In fact, it was even God that brought up the name of Job. In the book of Job chapter, chapter 1, in the book of Job and in chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Hallelujah. In verse, in the book of that same Job, if, if you read further down, we'll be told about his substance, the thing that he had, and all of that. But in verse 6, the Bible says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before God, before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. A day came, the sons of God came to present themselves before the Almighty God. The devil went. You see, this is a historical event. We are told about the land where the man lives and all of that. But beyond the physical, there was a meeting of sons of God coming together. These are spiritual beings. 
These are angels coming to present themselves before God, and the devil went among them. Now, if the devil went among them, it means these sons of God mentioned here are angelic beings because the devil, you see, is a fallen angel. So it is it is understandable that he will flow, he will go to the presence of God with other fellow creatures, amen, fellow, fellow like creatures. But then when they came to the presence of God, God began to speak about a man that he was so in love with by the name of Job. Now, in chapter 2, in our text, we have read from verse 1 to verse 12. I intentionally read that for you to see. There were three, five groups of uh, persons here, or five different groups of people in that chapter. You will find that in verse 6 to 12, we have read, God is mentioned. That is number one. And then number two, the devil is mentioned. And then number three, Job is mentioned. And then number four, the wife of Job is mentioned. And then number five, the friends of Job are mentioned. That is in verse 11 and 12. I'm just giving it in order because you see, God first was introduced into the scene, speaking with the devil. That is number two. And then of or about Job, that is number three, and then number four, when the problem started, the wife told him, the husband to cause God and die, that is number four, then number five, the friends are introduced into the picture. Now, you realize that when the wife began to, to you know, pick up issues with what was going on with Job, and she was not happy with the catastrophe, the trouble that Job was going through, not once did the wife mention the devil, no. Instead, the wife told Job, curse God and die. Now, realize that it was the devil that was behind the troubles, the challenges, but to the wife, it is God that is responsible to, for this. Because we know God loves you so much, he has blessed you. How did he allow all of this? Because they did not understand the dynamics of the devil behind the scene. Not once did the wife mention Satan. Not once did his friend mention Satan, yet it was the devil who was behind it. And today that is what is happening in the world. You cannot overcome the devil until you begin to understand the workings of the spirit realm. Praise the Lord. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter, one, chapter 2 verse 18, Paul the apostle was speaking. He said, wherefore we would have come unto you, even I Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. You wonder how is it that Paul the Apostle was so effective? Paul the Apostle accomplished so much. It was because the man understood the Satan factor in everything that he does. He said, we would have come to you once and again. So several occasions we wanted to come to you. He said, but the devil, Satan hindered us. A lot of people today are doing things and they do not consider the devil. They do not consider Satan. In fact, when you even talk of Satan, sometimes some people will give you some kind of look as to say, what Satan does the devil even exist? And yet, all over scriptures, the Bible talks about the devil. In fact, there are people today now, they call them Satanists, who believe in the worship of Satan, but those people will tell you God does not exist. And yet, it is in the story of God that the story of the devil is told. Without God, there was no Satan. Without the Bible, there was no Satan. It is the word of God that tells us about the devil, and yet people can relate with the devil and not with God. The reason is because the devil is at work, busy, making people to just look at him and say, the devil does not exist. In fact, right now, people don't even believe in a Satan. And once you don't believe in Satan, it becomes difficult for you to fight your challenges, like in the case of Job. As long as they were focused on something else, you know, accusing God, then the devil had a free day. The devil could do whatever he wants to do, destroy his life, take his property, destroy his children, destroy his family. But you see, from, from the moment he began to understand that this was not from God, that there was another being that was behind all of this, Job began to walk on a path of recovery and deliverance. I want to let you know today that a lot of things are happening in the world and the devil is behind it. And listen very carefully. Let me say this to you. You've got to understand something. That if you do not know how to fight the battles of life, you will never win. You see, a lot of people today are fighting with their own effort. Something that when you gather goods and gather this and gather that, then you'll be able to fight the battles of life. Only let me say this to you. There are spiritual battles that does not answer to money. It does not answer to your physical struggle. It does not answer to your name. It does not answer to your intelligence. No matter how educated you are, if you do not understand how to fight spiritual battles and to attack the devil, no matter what you gather together, it cannot deliver you from the power of evil. In fact, in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 9. 
the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 9, the Bible says, Woe unto him that, that coveted an evil covetousness to his house. What is an evil covetousness? That fight with physical power, that focuses on the physical and has no business with the spiritual. Say, I don't, I don't believe in all those spiritual things. So, they fight, they covet, they think that when they have more money, more property, more lands and houses and wives and children, then they will be secured. So, the Bible called them those who covet an evil covetousness to their house. The Bible says, that why are they doing that? That he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. That he may be delivered from the power of evil. So property does not deliver from evil. It's like the the, farm, the rich f f farmer who who said, "Oh my, I have so much harvest this year, and all of that. I will make bigger bands and and in all of it, he never considered God." And the Bible said, God said, all right, thou fool, this, this, this night I would require your soul from you and I will know to whom shall all these things be. No matter what we acquire, no matter what we get, if we do not understand the Satan dimension, the demonic factors, the fact that there is a devil, a spirit being that has so much power, he can operate, he can destroy, he can turn things upside down, he can cause confusion. Look at what is happening today around the world. People take guns, they shoot up their neighbor, one country attacking the other country, all kind of things are happening. You've got to understand how the word is there is the forces of good and of evil you must balance them you must understand these two different camp in order for you to have victory in life please stay with me because i'm taking you somewhere in the book of zachariah if you read the book of zachariah zachariah chapter 3 and in verse number 1 the book of zachariah chapter 3 verse 1 the bible says and he showed me joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Now, this was a spiritual, in, this was happening in the spiritual uh, uh, spirit realm, in the spirit realm. Now, physically, Joshua, the high priest, was going through challenges, a lot of things was going on. You remember Joshua, the high priest, made a lot of wrong decisions. It was Joshua, the high priest, who asked the people to break their earrings and everything, and he made a golden calf, an idol for people to worship. But here is what the Bible is giving us now a, a glance into the spirit realm of what was happening when Joshua was doing all of those things in the spirit realm, it was being resisted by the devil and it was making wrong decisions. But then something happened, he says. He says, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. If you read further down, you will see a picture that was painted. If you read down to verse 2 and then verse 3, the Bible began to speak about how that Joshua was putting on feeding garment and all of that. Why? Because the devil was resisting him. In fact, the, the angel of the Lord had to rebuke the devil in order for Joshua himself to be delivered. The Bible says, and the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee and all oh, Satan, even the Lord that had chosen Jerusalem rebuked the, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? That is Joshua. And you can tell if you study the, the Bible very well, you will discover that of all the people that were led astray, Joshua himself was delivered. He was delivered. He did not perish with them. You know, when the earthquake happened, you know, an earthquake happened that swallowed all of them because of the idol worship. Joshua was delivered. Now we have a glimpse into how he was delivered. In verse 3, the Bible says, Now Joshua was clothed with feedy garment and stood before the angel. It was the feedy garment, the feedy life. The reckless life, that feedy garment there speaks of ignorance in spiritual matters. That, that the feedy garment speaks uh, of the dirty life, careless life that he was living, a life void of God, a land without God. Is a life pictured in the spirit realm, you know, you know, clothed in feedy garment. And the Bible said the angel was standing by him. And if you read for that down later, we, time fails us to go into all of that. Joshua, in order for him to be delivered, the garment had to be removed from him. This man message that I'm preaching today, my prayer for you is that it will take off every garment, the garment of ignorance, the garment, the garment of, 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 of shame, it will take away the garment of unbelief, it will take away the garment, the garment of the devil that the enemy has put upon our lives. So if you study that verse very well, he was putting on feedy garment and that was what gave the devil the legal ground to operate in the life of Job, you say, of, of um, Joshua here. You say, but well, Bishop, where are you taking this sermon to? This is someone I'm going to take in uh, in two weeks. You see, 
Number one, in order for you to understand and deal with the enemy's operations and activities around you and have victory, you must understand that Satan exists. Satan exists. All true scriptures in the book of Job chapter 1 and in verse 6. Job chapter 1 and in verse number 6. Job chapter 1 in verse 6. Uh, the Bible says now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. Satan exists. The devil exists. In order to fight the devil and put him out of your life, your destiny, from your family, from your church, your children's life, you must understand this. There is no controversy. Satan exists. The Bible says Satan also came among them. He's a being that can move. He's a living being with senses. He's a being that can talk. In the book of Mark chapter 1 verse 13, Satan exists. Mark chapter 1 verse 13. The Bible says, and he was there in the wilderness. 40 days, that is speaking of Jesus, tempted of Satan, he can tempt, so he exists, uh, and was with the white beast, and the angels ministered unto him. Why were the angels ministering to Jesus, ministering to him? Because you see, the devil's temptation took a toll on him. So the devil exists. Uh, the fasting took a toll on him. He was weak in the wilderness. The angels had to strengthen, minister to him. Likewise, the devil also, Satan, tempted him. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 3, I'm establishing here that the devil exists. Let nobody deceive you. Satan exists. You can't fight an enemy that you does not believe exists. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 5, verse 3, the Bible says, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? The reason I brought you here is to establish once again, Satan has the ability to influence people. Peter said to him, it is Satan that has filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. And yet, there are a lot of people today that the devil is influencing their action, influencing their thought, influencing their mind, filling their heart with negative thoughts, with all kinds of evil things. And yet, they tell you they do not believe in the devil. Satan does not exist. Some of them will even quarrel when you talk about the devil. In fact, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and in verse number 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, Let Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Let Satan, the reason I'm bringing this message to you is in order for you not to be ignorant of his devices. Uh, because when you are ignorant of the devices of the devil, what happens? He gets an advantage. You put the devil at an advantage. Some people say, Oh, you know, this is superstition. Honey, hear me and hear me well. I'm not here to argue. I'm here to establish to you the fact uh, that there is a devil that exists that if you are ignorant of, it takes advantage of you and guess what? You stand no chance with him at all. Amen? And when we talk about Satan, we talk about the, the demons. The, the, the Bible speaks about Lucifer, the head of all the devils. So, when we talk about Satan, there are many Satans. There are many devils. But when we say in this singular Satan, we are talking about the head of principalities and powers. Among these principalities and powers, we have demons, you have devils, you have all of them. Now, the, we are have uh, 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 satanic operations, demonic activities, and all of that. But there is a Lucifer, a Satan, that rules over them, who is their head, the one that presides over every one of them. If you are ignorant of how this evil being operator, hear me and hear me where he can make your life miserable. He can fill you with anger. He can fill you with gossip. He can fill all kind of things. You see people taking guns and shooting people today. Why do you think that is happening? Here in America, they took out the Bible. They make the people ignorant. Now people no longer pray. People don't even know the devices of the devil. So people take guns and shoot up people because they have been told there is nothing to life. God does not exist. I mean, if God does not exist, it means everything about life is here. One minute you are alive, once we are dead, that is the end. But that is not true. There are religions that even teach you that wicked people, once they die, that is the end. No. There is another life. There is another realm. And it is that realm of the spirit where God and Satan operate that men die. When people die, they translate into that realm. But you see, that spirit realm has the power to control the physical because it is the spirit that rules the physical. And when we talk about Satan, demons and the rest, there are many. There are many devils. In fact, in the book of Mark, the book of Mark chapter 5, the book of Mark chapter 5 verse 12, the book of Mark chapter 5 and in verse number 
12. Come with me there. Mark chapter 5 and in verse 12. He said, and all the devils, all the devils, plural, not singular, not one, besought him. This was Jesus, you know, who met one day he was going to, he entered a place called the country of the Gerasens. And then the Bible said when Jesus moved over to the other side of the country of the Gerasens, he met a man who was possessed with devils and the devils besought him. They begged him, they plead with him saying, the devils can speak. Satan can speak too. They said, say, they, they, they plead with him saying, what did they say? Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. We may enter. So they have the ability to enter places, to enter flesh, to enter people, to enter. Sometimes they enter trees. Sometimes they, they can possess a house, possess a car, possess different places. Hallelujah. So they ask Jesus to give them leave to enter into a place. Now, Jesus is the only power that can conquer Satan. Jesus is the only power that can conquer Satan. Now, we establish here that the devil exists, that Satan lives. But how do you overcome the devil? You've got to have Jesus Christ in your life. Like I said, I'm taking this message in two parts. We'll be stopping um, here for today. But come with me first to the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 7. Luke chapter 10, verse 7. How to overcome Satan? How do I overcome Satan? I know there are a lot of people there right now who are following this sermon and saying, well, Bishop, we can see that the devil actually exists. But how do I overcome him? The book of Luke chapter 10 and in verse number 17. Luke chapter 10 and in verse number 17. Luke chapter 10 verse 17. In Luke chapter 10 verse 17, the Bible says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Whose name? The name of Jesus Christ. No wonder the Bible says, At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. A lot of people today want to fight the devil using all kind of means. They want to use some kind of religion. Some of them have joined some occultic houses and all of that. You can't fight the devil with the devil. The Bible says there is no other name given among men in the book of Acts of Apostles under heaven whereby we can be saved. No other name apart from the name of Jesus Christ. No other name. So the disciples returned back and said, Lord, we saw that the devils were subject to us through your name. Chapter 9 of the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter, chapter 9 and in verse 49. Luke chapter 9 verse 49 hallelujah and john answered and said and, and said master we saw one casting out devils in the name and we forbade him because he followed not with us we saw somebody casting out devils in your name it is only through the name of jesus christ that we can cast out devils that luke chapter 9 makes it very clear he said and john answered and said master we saw one casting out devils casting out devils so only devils exist and here, John is saying, we saw somebody, we witnessed somebody casting out devils in your name and we forbid him because he does not follow us. You know, if you read for that letter, Jesus said to them, no, you shouldn't forbid anybody to cast out devil from through my name because anyone that is with me cannot speak against me. Praise the Lord. Which means, in order for you to be able to deal with devils, you must have Jesus Christ in your life. You must receive Jesus Christ into your life. Accept Jesus into your life. And how do you do that? Number one, by believing that only through Jesus we can have redemption. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, it says that if thou shalt believe in thy heart the Lord Jesus and shall confess him with thy mouth that God have raised him from the dead, the Bible says that you shall be saved. In other words, if you believe Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God, and that God have raised him from the dead, in, in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9, and if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'll be bringing you the second part of this message next week. But if you are there and you want to give your life to Jesus, and you say, man of God, I cannot see that the devil exists, there are powers of darkness i want to overcome them honey it begins with you receiving jesus christ into your life can you please repeat after me say lord jesus i thank you for your word that has come to me today thank you for opening my eyes to see that there are two realms the realm of the physical and the spirit jehovah elohim i come before you today and i surrender please lord jesus come into my heart forgive me my sins deliver me from iniquity cancel my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the grace to walk with you, to follow you, and to do your will. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because I know you have done it. Thank you, for I am now your child. 
For I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the God of heaven bless you. Next week, we'll be I'll be coming, with, coming your way again with the second part of this message. Please, you don't want to miss it. And that is overcoming satanic powers part two. How to overcome the powers of the devil. I want to let you know that this message may look like, oh, it is just a simple message. It's one of those messages. No. If, that, if, if Job had had a message like this, before the trials, the challenges that he went through, I tell you the truth, he would have had victory over the battles of life. I want to let you know, next week I'll be explaining how men worship the devil, the things that people worship, and how they make them subject to the devil, and how you, by the grace of God, can overcome. Today I have just shown to you, the first key is receiving Jesus Christ into your life, and once Jesus comes into your life, it makes the difference. Difference. I'm telling you the truth. It makes a difference because Jesus is light. And anywhere the light that Jesus Christ is, is turned on. Hear me and hear me well to focus on Jesus in knowledge with the things of God, of the things of God, the devil ceases to operate. The devil immediately leaves that life alone and then God himself take over that life. There are many people today who are sick. There are many people today who are in bondage. And Jesus is saying, Come to me, receive me, get me, and I will give you the power to overcome all things. You remember there was the woman that Jesus met who was bowed down, who had an infirmity? And the Bible said when Jesus saw him, he said, here is his statement. Ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, lo, whom Satan had bound these 18 years, be loose from her infirmities? Who banned her? The devil banned her. Satan banned her. But the woman didn't know. And because the woman did not know that she was under bondage from the devil, that woman was bowed down in problem for 18 good years. I pray for you right now, you that is hearing the sound of my voice, whatever the enemy has put in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I break it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare, let the operations of darkness in your life, in your family, around you, come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if the Son of Man shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. As you hear the sound of my voice today, I decree and declare that you are free. I break the power and hold of darkness over your life. Life. I decree and declare that you are liberated uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I release the anointing of God upon your life uh, and decree let like the powers of darkness, the shackles uh, from hell over your life be broken and shattered uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every power right now that is in oppression against your life because the devil has decided to ruin your life or to make your life miserable, I command you to stop. Uh, let satanic strategy right now against your life be stopped, be put to an end in the name of Jesus. Let every attack from the north, south, east and west coming against you from devils, demons and Satan from Lucifer himself be stopped. Let it cease in Jesus name. Amen. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV.